Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. 2020 will be filled with a series of tests. So why not get the year started off a little early with a series I ran via LinkedIn and YouTube, connecting the dots between some of my favorite holiday movies and lessons that apply to sales, business, and life. This is one of five episodes where we'll share five of the segments originally launched as videos. If you'd like to see the original videos, please check out the links in the show notes. This sprint is brought to you by the Catalyst Sale Sprint of the Month. These sprints are designed to help you put the concepts discussed in the podcast into practice in your business. Let's get started. Well, I want to go ahead and kick off a series, a series of merry and bright. We're going to talk about some of the lessons that can be learned from some of the great Christmas movies that are out there. And I've got a couple of my own favorite. As you can see, I'm wearing a hockey jersey. The hockey jersey has double zeros for those who know. Uh, and I'm not a Blackhawks fan, so I wouldn't put a Chicago Blackhawks jersey on. I'm actually an Islander fan and a Coyote fan. Um, but you know how important the uh, Blackhawks are to Clark Griswold, which uh, is the leading uh, character in uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Three of my other favorite Christmas movies are Charlie Brown's Christmas, Elf, and A Christmas Story. You'll see artifacts from each of those as we go through this series. Now, I want to highlight a couple of things. One of the things I'm going to highlight as we go through this are some lessons that we can learn that apply to sales and apply to growing our business directly from each of these movies. I'll start with an easy one. You've heard me say this one before. In National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, there's that scene where you know, Clark is trying to light the lights and everybody's out front and there some people have had a little bit too much to drink and he goes through the process of lighting the lights and the lights don't work. Well, ultimately the grandfather says, I hope you all see what a uh, poor use of resources or waste of resources this was. Audrey, the granddaughter looks up and says, well, grandpa, you worked really hard on this. And he turns to her and says, yeah, so do washing machines. One of the things I take away from this is I don't want to be a washing machine. I don't want to be known as just someone who's working hard and not putting the right resources in the right place, moving toward the right things. So as you look at the work that you're doing, are you spending time doing the right things or are you simply a washing machine? Are you going through the motions? Are you doing something that could be done by something else or are you actually making an impact? Don't be a washing machine. Most of you know I'm a sun devil. Uh, I've got my issue Santa hat on. Uh, we're in that period of time, one that I really enjoy, this period between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We're going through this 25 days of tips uh, uh, in December. One of the other movies that I really love is Charlie Brown Christmas. And there's a couple of key stories that you can take out of this one. The one that I'm going to focus on right now is uh, when uh, Schrader and uh, Lucy are... Uh, sitting, by, sitting by the piano, and Lucy asks Schrader if he knows how to play Jingle Bells. And Schrader, you know, of course, goes to the piano and he plays this nice professional classical rendition of Jingle Bells. And she said, "No, that's not it. You know, Jingle Bells, you know, ho ho ho, and deck the halls." And and he starts playing again and he plays it with an organ in the background, so that organ version. Of Jingle Bells. And she goes, no, no, that's not it. And then he goes and plays Jingle Bells on a single key. And when he goes and plays it on a single key, that's where she jumps up and says, that's it. That's it. He falls back off the, uh, the piano bench. And the story that I take away from this is the importance of keeping things simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. We overcomplicate things because we let our creativity get in the way. And creativity is a good thing. But sometimes, especially when we're working to convey a message both to our team and to our customer, and heck, inside our family, it's important to simplify things, really simplify the message, get back to the basics. Let's not overcomplicate things by adding layers. So stop overcomplicating Jingle Bells by adding in all of these keys. Get back to a single key version of Jingle Bells and think about where that takes you back from a memory perspective. So at the beginning of Elf, it starts off with you know, Buddy in uh, Santa's workshop. And there are a couple of tips that we'll get into a little bit later in this series uh, related to Santa's workshop. But 
Then Betty goes on this journey. He goes through, he goes on this travel and they carry this travel all the way through. He goes by the snowman uh, that, you know, most of us remember from uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He says hello to a couple of animals. He even talks to a narwhal. um, And I've got my narwhal uh, socks right here. He then uh, goes through the seven levels of the Candyland forest. Uh, he has to go through, comes out with the Lincoln Tunnel, and all of a sudden he's in New York City. The thing I want you to think about relative to that scene and that part of the movie is what journey are you on? What stages, what do you have to go through in order to get to the end result that you're looking for? What guiding light have you created? Buddy had a snow globe. His snow globe had the Empire State Building in the center of the snow globe that helped him. Uh, that was his guiding compass as he moved forward uh, throughout this path. As you go through these paths, as you come across the uh, badger or raccoon who doesn't want to hug, or as you come across uh, those yellow cabs that you see uh, that you have to navigate throughout the city, what guiding light will you have that helps keep you on pace and helps you keep moving forward? Thanks for watching these videos. I would love to hear your feedback. I'd like to know if these are resonating, what they make you think of. If you have movies that help remind you of specific uh, challenges that you've run into in sales or opportunities that you've created for yourself. At the beginning of Christmas Story, there's this scene. They're huddled around a store window. They're they're literally window shopping. And as they pan the camera around, you see the kids' faces. And it's amazing the emotion that can um, be captured just by looking at someone's face, by seeing their eyes, by seeing their facial expressions, by watching how they push and maneuver their way uh, into things, by looking at where their eyes go. There really aren't very many words that are stated during this. There's some commentary by the, narr- the narrator. There's also some video that swings around and in through uh, the uh, through the scene as they look at the train track, as they look at the Red Rider BB gun. And now you start to realize that that's what Ralphie's working toward is he wants this Red Rider uh, BB gun. And that's the, that continues throughout the arc of the story. The takeaway from this scene uh, is... Uh, Think about what you can convey to folks as you work with them and what they convey back to you as you work with them in nonverbal communication. What do they say with their eyes? What do they say with their facial expressions? What do they say with their questions? And I know that's a, it's going to be a little bit more verbal, but what part of the story can you pull from them based on the information that they share in a nonverbal environment? Do they lean in? Do they not? Are they crossing their arms? Are they engaged in the conversation? Leverage that nonverbal information, that other part of communication that goes above and beyond your ears that actually uses your eyes to help get a better understanding of what's actually happening in the story. By doing this, we can help remove some of our bias. I'd like to understand how, you're, how you look at nonverbal communication and how you take advantage of that when you're in a scenario. Let's say you're in a scenario where... Um, you're, on a video, you're not on a video call, but you're actually on a phone call. What are some of the things that you can do to get information that goes beyond uh, the verbal ticks and verbal cues and, and pauses? We're back to Christmas vacation. There's that scene when they're in the attic. Uh, Clark is going up there to hide some Christmas presents, where he usually hides Christmas presents. And as he's doing this, the family leaves to go shopping. There's a little bit of... Uh, uh, argument between uh, Clark's wife and her father, and he wants to get moving because he's hungry and his back is starting to hurt. Anyhow, they leave the house and they leave Clark up in the attic. They don't know that Clark's in the attic. Clark starts to get cold. He starts to grab things from the attic. He starts to take out um, scarves and sweaters and starts to bundle up. And as he's doing this, he comes across some videotapes. He comes across some videos from Christmas and holidays before. He goes through and he views those videos and a tear comes to his eyes. He starts to remember the memories that he has with all of his family. This highlights for me the importance of nostalgia and how nostalgia has a significant impact on us all. Disney Plus just launched recently. Some of the videos that are getting the most attention are things like the Apple Dumpling Gang, which is an older an older video, some of the older animated videos. Well, what nostalgia makes me think about is the importance of reflection. 
How are you leveraging? How are you reflecting on the things that you've accomplished? Well, it might be over the course of the past year. It might be over the course of the past months. It might be even just over the past week. How are you using reflection as a practice to help improve the way that you do work with your clients, the way that you do work in your business, and the way that you expand your business? Reflection is important. It's a tactic that's very important as you start to look at new ways to identify um, areas of progress. How are you applying reflection in your business? Please let me know what you think via CatalystSale.com, via the live chat, or via the Catalyst Sale Twitter handle. You can learn more about the Sprint of the Month by going to CatalystSale.com and clicking on Sprints. Thanks for listening. Sales is a thinking process. How are you thinking differently about yours?